What's going on everybody, it's Denver and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'd like to continue with the Interaction SDK tutorials, where I'm gonna be showing you how to use the Ray Interactors and also the Ray Interactables. I'm also gonna be showing you a debug gizmos that is going to allow you to see the rays in real time, and also it's going to show you the state of the ray as you interact with different objects. I also want to show you how you can basically wire up events as we're selecting some of the objects in the demo scene that we're building. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we need to do today. So I'm going to start by looking at the Ray's demo, which is basically just an empty scene. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the room environment. You're gonna see how this is similar to the ones that we have for the interaction SDK. I'm also going to be dragging and dropping the debug area, basically for anything that we want to log, we're gonna be put it in there. And then now we need to go ahead and drop the, basically the synthetic, so I'll just show you what it is, the interaction rig of VR, full synthetic, which is going to be basically our camera rig and everything that we have for our hands. So that's where we're gonna be putting the interactors and also hands and controllers. So if we go ahead and expand this, we're gonna go ahead and look at the OVR interaction. And there's gonna be a OVR controller hands and also a OVR hands. We're gonna be basically adding components to both. Synthetic means that it's going to be a fake, right? This is basically a synthetic hand. So there's gonna be one for the left hand and one for the right hand. We won't be touching those. But if you go ahead and expand, for instance, that left controller hand and also the right controller hand, you're gonna see that we have this controller hand interactor. So go into Oculus, go into interaction, and then runtime. I'm going to be focusing on the ones for Ray. So, and in here we have a couple of different prefabs. One is gonna be for the controller, also one for the hand Ray, and there's also one plain Ray interactable, which is basically what we're gonna be adding to the objects that we're going to be acting on. So. If we go into this one, this one is going to be, basically these are controllers, but they have hands. So we're gonna be using the hand ray interactor. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it in here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the hands. So let me go ahead and collapse and expand both of them. So you're gonna see there's one for the left hand there. Drag it and drop it inside. And then I'll do the same thing here on the right interactor. So just so you remember, this is gonna be where all the interactors are gonna be. This could be, a ray interactor, a snap interactor, a grabbable, all of those are gonna go into that. So what I gotta do here is I'm gonna go ahead and add these to the interactor group. I'm going to be, also if I go into the interactor itself, I need to associate it with a hand, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this one for the hand. Let me go ahead and do this one too. Make sure that I associate it to the interactor group. And then I also need to associate it with the right hand, that way it knows which hand we're going to be using. And then the same thing here for the real hand. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this one, go into the hand ray interactor. And you can rename these ones if you like, if you wanna know if they're for the left hand or the right hand. I think for now, for the purposes of, of this video, we can just leave it like that. Oh, let me make sure that I do the right hand in here. And then if I go here to the hand interactor right, I can also associate it with the with the group so we can assign it. So if you go to the hand ray interactor, you're gonna see that this has the hand reference. We're also gonna have a new component which is going to be the ray interactor. This is the one that it's going to basically determine how the ray and where the point of the ray is going to be. So there's a ray origin and there's also a max ray length. So when it's trying to do a ray cast, this is going to be the one responsible for that. This one doesn't actually do the selection. The selection happens on this selector, which is an index pinch selector, just so that you know that that's how that works because you might think, oh, this is doing the selection, but in reality, it's your pinch that is doing the selection. So if we go in here, you can obviously change the max ray length and also the origin. This component already has everything that you need. In fact, if we go here, you're gonna see there's gonna be a pinch visual. There's also a ray caster cursor visual. So this has everything already set up. So if I go into this one right here, the Raycaster cursor visual, you're gonna see that this already has, you know, the actual cursor that is gonna be rendered on the objects. And if I go into the cursor object itself, you're gonna see that we have also a cursor. And also there's a, a selection circle, which for some reason this has an issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and associate it here to a button. Just make sure that I have those assigned. So let me go ahead and selection circle, make sure that I fix all of them and not just that one. 
So I'm just gonna do that. So this is basically a button that is gonna be rendered blue whenever we're doing a pinch selection on the surface of the object that we're doing a ray cast on. So just make sure that you do that so that it fixes that issue. So once you do that, then you know everything should be good to go. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go ahead and set up an object to have, basically we can do a ray against. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and collapse all of these. We don't need to look at that just yet. And this is gonna be interactables. So again, interactables are gonna be things that we are interacting with. So on this one, we're going to be creating a new object. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click on that. And then this one is just gonna be a 3D object. I'm just gonna call it cube. And the cube is going to be cube ray interactable. So the next part that is really important if you want to interact with this object by using a ray is that we need to add a couple of components. So the first component that we need to give this cube awareness of is going to be a collider surface. So I'm just gonna do search for a collider surface. So think of this component as the glue between the actual collider and an interactable, which means that it's going to calculate if there's a collision happening between specific points. So this is how that works, is basically you grab the collider and then you associate it with the collider surface. So that gives you a surface, but you can't really see anything just yet because we haven't really done much. The next thing that we need to do as well is we're gonna be adding a ray interactable. And this is gonna be the main component to be able to interact with this subject by using a ray. So what I need to do here is I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop the surface component. There's other components in here that you can also add, you can add interactive filters, also select surface, a movement provider, which I cover in a, in a previous video. For now, we can just leave it like this, and I think this should be everything that we need to do there. The other thing that I'm gonna do though is I'm going to also add another component here, and this is gonna be, just to change things up, I'm just gonna do uh, perhaps a sphere. All right guys, so it looks like this is working. You guys can see that now we have the two different points on the ray. If I do a pinch, it basically changes to blue, which is the actual sprite that we decided to do. You can also do that on that one, and you can see that it's actually detecting the ray cast. So the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and send an event to the log whenever I am interacting with this subject. So what we can do is we can just do Unity, and if you do Unity, you're gonna see a bunch of different Unity events. These are going to be interactable, so we're gonna be selecting this component, and then what I can do here is I can just go ahead and do select and then on select, which are the ones that I'm going to be triggering. We can also do the same thing on this one. I can do that and then we can go here to the select and also the on select. For the object itself, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and associate that with the debug area. We can do that, we can do that, and I can go here and find my logger, which is available on this repo, so just make sure that you look at it. So I can say on this one, it's going to be, we can just basically copy this name and we can say select it, something like that. And then maybe we just copy that same text. We look for the logger. And then on this one, we can just say unselect it. That way we know what's happening. So just do unselect it. We can go ahead and right click on the interactables and then 3D object. And I'm going to be doing a cylinder for that. except that I'm gonna be doing one more thing here that is going to be different. So this one is gonna have, uh, basically it's going to change the colors based on the state. So if you search for color here, you're gonna see that we have an interactable color visual. And, and this is really cool, but it also takes another component which we're gonna need. And that is going to be material property block editor. And what this does is basically it's going to have access to some of the properties on the mesh including the render information. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it there. For the normal state, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use my color picker here, select that. But I wanna change it maybe to like a red, we can just do a red color. You can always change also the color time. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then maybe yellow whenever we're going to uh, selection state. So that's really cool. So the other thing that I also want to do that I think it's gonna give us more more information. It's going to be creating a ray that is going to go from the hands. And that it's really cool because they already built it for us. So we can go and associate it with 
Let's go ahead and do it on both hands. So I'm gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it on the controllers. You can also do it on the controllers if you like. Ray Interactor Debug Gizmo. So if you do that, it's basically going to create a ray from the center of your hands, basically pointing to, to the direction that you are, your hand is facing to. So what I'll do here is I also need to associate the actual ray. You can also change the colors. I think for this demo, we can just leave it like that. And then I'm also going to be doing the same thing on this one. So we can just select the, the hand interactors, right? Hand ray interactor. And then maybe on this one, we can just do a, something a little bit different. So we can just do white and may, maybe on this one, we just do red on the hover. And then maybe for the selection, we can do, how about we can just do a green for the selection as it is. And you can also change that ray width, but I think we can just leave it like that for the demo purposes. This component is just going to be a plane. So just put that plane in here. On this one, I want to basically clone it every time I am doing a selection. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and capture the select. We're gonna have to add a new component. So let me go ahead and make sure that this one is associated with the actual interactable. And then we'll go here to scripts. And I believe I already have a script folder. If I don't, no, it looks like I have one. And then we'll just create a new script. And then this is just gonna be object creator. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on this script is we're gonna be adding a serializable property. So let's go ahead and do serializable. And then it's gonna be taking an offset. So I'm just gonna do a vector three and then I'll just say offset. So the idea here is that every time I'm selecting an object, I'm going to be cloning itself. And basically it's going to move on the Y axis, probably about double the size of the object and maybe a little bit more. So what I'll do here, I'll just say public void and we can just say clone me, which is gonna be that method that I'll call. And then we can say var new object instantiate, there we go. And then I'll just instantiate the same object here then what I'll do here is on the new object, we can just say, I'm going to be accessing the game object and then I can grab the transform position. And then what I'll do here is I'm going to be grabbing and summing the position that it already has to an offset. So we can just do something like that. I think it's gonna give us the results and then we can just set it to, you know, to inactive. That way we don't see the object multiple times. What I'm gonna do here is I wanna make sure that whenever I clone it, I keep the, you know, the same parent. So what I'll do here, I'll just say, you know, new object, and then the parent of this new object is going to be basically the parent of the object that I'm trying to clone it from. So I'll just say transform and then parent. And then the other thing that I also want to do is I want to make sure that I have the same, you know, the same position. So it's gonna say transform the position is going to be equal to the game object, transform that position. But in this case, I want to do an offset. So I'm just gonna say offset it by the offset that I have in here. Okay, so now I have the two rays like we have before. And now I can start just doing, you know, selection and selection. And the reason why it's going up is because it's cloning and then offsetting based on Y. I could easily go in here and say, you know what? I want to change the offset of this. And then we can probably do maybe 0.05 and then try that one more time. And now the offset should be a lot higher. So we know that that is working and it is capturing the event. This one is also changing color. Also it changes whenever I am hovering over it. So you can see that it's changing to red. And then when I select it, it changes to yellow. And then we also have these two rays that I show you, well, that we walked through before. One of them is set to blue by default and actually to red by default and to white when we're not selecting anything. But as soon as I do a selection, you can see that this one is changing to blue and this one to red. We can also do a selection on this one. And this one doesn't change colors because we didn't do anything in there. But this one is actually emitting the event that happens whenever I do a selection. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any questions about rays, let me know in the comments. And I'm also going to be covering how to use rays with UI components. So I'm going to be doing that on the next video. And let me know if you like these videos. And if you do, make sure they subscribe to get notified about the future videos. Thank you very much, guys.